Jeff had so Jeff has so much energy. <laughs> so much. Like how? You look up at one point, it's like, why does he have eight treasures in there? I, I actually said that. I was like, how does he have eight treasures in there? What happened? And then someone's like, there's been 14 ring triggers, so he's just been attacking with this goblin. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. We have uh, played a lot of magic over the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, we've got one, two more rounds. Two more rounds, uh, and then it cuts to top eight. Yeah, because I think they're, they're in the last round right now. We're going to be going to do it the round before that, yeah, so... We'll we'll have a, a match or two for you here real quick. Uh, we're going to pick up here Austin Query playing Demir Mill. The, the, the best player, the number one player, everybody's fan favorite, Demir Mill back on. You mean your screen. fan favorite? God, you Mill players, weirdos. I'm sorry, Austin, I'm sorry. That, that was directed more at my <laughs> casting partner here, David Palmer, not at you. You're great. David's weird. You're my people, Austin. I'm here for the Amulet Titan um, guy. Let's go. Let's go, Trent. Uh, both players sitting at nine and two, very well positioned for making it into the top eight here. One win probably uh, puts them in position to draw in uh, in uh, round 15 and 14, and then uh, nine two two probably gets you there. Yeah, I was gonna say it's, it's gonna be a little close on that. Sometimes you'll break a little weird. We we'll have to see exactly what happens if there was already some intentional draws because. There were two martyr uh, players, you know, yeah. Jody Keith and somebody else were playing the deck, and that could make some weird pairings happen in the last few rounds. But most likely, yeah, nine, two, and two will bunch, be good uh, enough. A bunch of blue white players made it into the Sure, that's two, a good point, so too. There's, yeah. Uh, there's that to think about as well. Yeah, there's always a chance something like that. Now, we do have the turn one crab here this game, and you're talking about how important that is in this matchup. Have you ever played uh, the Demir Mill matchup versus Amulet Titan? Uh, I have just in uh, gold fishing with uh, friends of mine because you don't really interact a whole lot with each sure. other. It's just two ships passing in the night. Yeah, okay. we're doing our thing. Uh, uh, I did see this matchup actually happen earlier out on the floor. I was watching Colin Roundtree play it, mm -hmm. and he got his uh, Primeval Titan surgical extractions on like turn two. Round yeah, timer. I had to try to win without those. Turn one or turn two extraction on Prime usually leads to a Demir Mill win pretty easily. That's the main line that Demir is going to try and take. Uh, find an important thing and get rid of it. Uh, you can also just get lucky and put them all in the graveyard uh, if you if you're doing a good job. The double crab start with no removal from Amulet Ooh. Titan. Gonna that be is scary, a, but that is a surgical and an Amulet of Vigor, and it gets one out of out Trent's of hand. That is huge here. Uh, we we saw Demir use surgical as a discard spell yesterday, targeted when they knew this is just a blind hit. Yeah, this is a good blind one. And uh, you know what? I'm going to get tested again here this round, keeping up with all the cards that are in play. Uh -huh. The amulet players always like to make their decks so shiny. It's so shiny. The the newest, coolest versions of everything. Look, I love it. Personal expression is great in this game. It's awesome. It makes my job that much harder. Very hard. Uh, so is that a Valakut on top? In the it's hand? a Valakut. Uh, I think below that is a... Well, Thank you, Anu. Uh, below that is, I think that's a green-white bounce land primeval titan right? it is primeval titan to the left of that and then the fourth card we can't see because i think that a selesnia sanctuary yeah. underneath it. in fact look i can confirm it because there's one on the right side as well yeah and uh, trent you have to play the grazer first right yeah the grazer next turn he would have been able to play amulet do some mount shenanigans and go off but instead austin takes away the amulet and much different looking game yeah versus draw. whenever you can stop one of the cards that's in the name of the deck it's generally a good thing. Like, I remember when I first started playing Legacy, the first time I went to play in a Legacy tournament, <laughs> I was like, man, I think I'm going to mess up. I'm worried about, like, Force of Willing the wrong thing. And somebody goes, if it's in the name of the deck, Force of Willing. Force it. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a good rule to follow. Never felt good to force a Delver, but... Yeah, sure. Just killed you. Sure. I mean, sometimes it saves you nine life, you know, 12 life, so... You were one of those like, people that blind flipped Delvers a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's just always there. What are you talking about? I don't know what that's like. People are like, oh, they have to set it up. They're like, what do you mean set it up? I just always have a spell there. You don't? That's, that's how it works. Yeah. You play Delver, there's a spell on top. the card says. All right, so we're going to get the uh, Celestia Bounce Second. Land. Um, returns and Trent just passes the, um, the removal of the amulet, really slowing down <laughs> Titan and um, Double Crab Fetch Land. That's a quick 12 more without playing a spell. So this is a six here after the fetch is going to be another six. This might be a quick game for uh, the Amulet Titan player. Uh, if you have crabs, no jokes. <laughs> if you have the crabs, I was going to let that one just sit and simmer a little bit. Uh, you really can just burn 
your opponent. Oh, dear lord. From a mill standpoint, really fast. Yeah. Did you like that one? Sure, sure. It was not bad. Okay. I'm trying to think of how far I want to take it because I had like a I had a response to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you let it, you let it die. Let it die. Yeah. Which is uh, kind of what's happening to Trent right now. Yeah, very slowly. His life total is the amount of cards he has left in his deck, which is getting smaller by the moment. Harder to track, but not impossible. Uh, he he very kindly has laid out in piles of five in his graveyard. Seventeen cards currently in graveyard. Uh, one exiled, three in play. Two or three in hand. So he's got about 36, 37 cards uh, left, and we're about to dump a bunch more into the graveyard. Yeah, that was a field of Ronos was in his sanctuary. You know, this does multiple good things for him. Not only does this take away one of these bounce lands from Trent and take, take away, away a mana, he's going to put another land into play for Austin's side, and that's going to mill another six cards. Are we going to have a mill player make it to the top eight of this tournament? We've got some. Absolutely. We're going to put a, we're going to put a mill name on the trophy. You're going to join me on that trophy, Austin. And our names will be up there. Tana, is well, your name on the trophy? Of course it's not. Come on. Look, you only have to top eight to get on this trophy. Okay. Well, I guess done that. I haven't actually played in the HBMO. I guess I'm going to have to do that one year. Yeah. Maybe I could double dip. I could play and do commentary. Back and forth. Back yeah, and I'll just forth. run back and forth. I'll commentate on my own match. I'll do I'll do the, the flash thing. But Easily. what deck were you playing when you made top eight? Do you remember? So the I top eighted the very first one. Mm -hmm. So 10 years ago, uh, I was playing S or uh, Blue Eye Control with Sphinx's Revelation. And then, be still my heart. You're talking about these cards. You're like, God, I love that yeah. card. And then the top eight was a uh, Modern Masters draft. Oh, I remember this. Back when it was like a, Robert Bernie. Yeah, that was a mix of. Oh man, good old Bernie. Good old Bernie. Grand Prix champion Roberto yeah. Bernie. Gotta put some respect on the name. While the uh, while also is doing a lot of searching and stuff here, and take take her time and Robert, reminisce. Robert may have been the best mono uh, uh, black, black uh, player in the world. For, that's that's for the about a year. That's the that's the Grand Prix that he won. Yep. Yep. Uh, he he jokes that he put the the deck away, and then picked it up to win another event, put it away, and picked it up to win a third mm -hmm. event. He won three events in a row with the same deck with no changes. That's awesome. I'm one of those so people they, that if I have a deck that I play a lot, I have like you, you ever heard of like Patrick Sullivan has like the burn box. It has like mm, all the cards you would need. For, might want to play. I had that for for Delver for Legacy. So whenever I would go somewhere, I had like all my options for sideboard or to switch colors, all my duels. I had that for Legacy for a long time for Delver for me. So Austin has removed the Karns from Trent's deck. Uh, I, I suppose a Titan has never hit the graveyard because that would have probably been the better choice. Uh, but maybe he just wanted to take away the access to Relic of Progenitus or something on those there, lines. Yeah, there's that in the fact that Trent has what three mana right now, so he's a little he and he has no amulets. Yeah, he has no way to get to Karn anytime. I'm sorry, to Titan anytime soon. So now Karn was the more ready threat. Absolutely. Uh, and Austin has had none of the targeted um, mill. It's just been the crabs and then a couple of extractions, removing cards. Yeah, he's, he's going the hard way. Yeah. So I'm just making land drops. Oh, here comes another 12 cards. Why, this would, you, why is, would you cast spells? Yeah, I was gonna say, this is going to get close to being it, actually. I think we're getting, there we go. There's a Titan right there, but mm -hmm. like I said, I think we're past the point where that matters. Oh, yeah, I think this is probably it. This should be enough with the fetch as well. Yep, yep, and that's enough. And uh, Austin takes down game one versus Trent <laughs> in uh, impressive fashion. Is this kind of? A, I know you said you you've played this match a little bit. Is, is that a like a typical way that this game works out if the t amulet player doesn't go off right away? It, so the big thing is that you you can disrupt them before they can go off if you draw surgical. Right. So if the Demir player draws surgical, the likelihood of them winning goes way way up. Uh, if they don't, then obviously the aim of the player can kill you fast enough that it doesn't matter. Yeah, because you don't interact with them very much, no, like on the stack or in play. Yeah, yeah. So, if you're playing a slower game, you can have like drown in the lock as a as an out to a titan. But if they play a titan once, they're probably going to kill you the next turn, whether that titan lives or not. Um, but the the biggest thing is just trying to disrupt them before they do it. Another question here is this going to be one of the matchups where it's possible that our opponent presents more than sixty cards out of the Titan deck? You know that's that's a possibility. As we look at the Titan deck and the cards that they want, the problem is that you have to leave all your cards on the sideboard for Karn. Sure. Oh, that's a good it's, point. Yeah, where the, the Karn this deck is is two dismember, two force, and then the Karn eleven stuff. Karn targets. So maybe you bring in like one or two because you do have. The thing is, you could bring in the ones that maybe get found off of Urza Saga. Yep. Yeah, you could maybe if you want to do that. If you want to go up in cards. So he could bring in like Ormod's Crypt, Walking Ballista, Pithing Needle. 
all his things that he could find. Engineered explosives. Explosives probably going to come in yep. anyway, just to blow up crabs. Yep. Uh, this member doesn't feel terrible. Uh, I, it's good enough just for me. Just kill a crab. Especially with how often Austin has these. Cause you see both players with their their best start. best best starts on turn one. Uh, Austin short the second crab this time, which makes a big difference. Yeah, and an amulet. I mean, I'm sorry. A uh, yeah, an amulet does get milled here again, but there's one already in place. So you can't David's surgical extraction on that one. Yeah. So good news for Trent here, and then those were two different bounces. Those the Slesian one and the Simic one. Those are targetable by that's that's something that's also to keep in mind. Surgical extraction hit non-basic lands as mm -hmm. well. So there's a possibility that something like that could pop, come up if you were to see Trent's hand and no. Austin is sitting on an archive trap and one extraction. Surprised he did not go for another mill here with an extraction in hand and your opponent already having an amulet. He might do it in his uh, it is draw step. Let him draw the card. That yeah. way you, you get better the possibility. Yeah. It does seem like there was a stop here. While yeah. Austin thought about it. He is going to copy the amulet here. Two amulets is a big game. Yeah, these are the scary draws out of Amulet Titan. And look at this. There's there's technically one land in play on Trent's side of the board. He's already casting a summoner's pack. This is scary if you are Austin. All right, so we're going to get a Kraken response. Yeah, so what we're going to have here is, I, I like this response, and he's going to be like, all right, you're most likely going after uh, a specific target here, so if he could mill you one of them one here of and hit it in surgical, because it, it could be Titan, it could be Dry to the Elysian Grove. If he hits that and he gets it out of Trent's hand, this is huge for him, because if Trent can't play extra lands this turn to get extra lands, sure. he's actually just dead this turn because yeah. of the uh, the packs. Oh, that's Dry it. If that's what he's going for, and he has a surgical on Dryad here, there's a chance he dies on this turn. Was that the Dryad? Yeah, that was Dryad of the Elysian Grove, the second one. I thought that was the Cultivator Colossus. No, that was definitely Dryad of the Elysian Grove. That's one of the ultimate arts of it. I'm going to trust you better than me on that one. I'm not always right. Yeah, that's the ultimate art of it. Yeah, I think, I think you snap off a surgical on Dryad here. Yeah, Austin's thinking about it. When someone takes this long, they usually do it. He, want, he wants it for Prime, but... It looks like we got a Drown of the Lock instead. So he's got to... Just counter it instead. Yeah, I like this. This guy spits the difference. You know, yep. like, what if he's actually going for something else? Yep. You don't know for sure. What if he had a way to just kill me with Titan right here? Right. It, it is really attractive to try and just kill your opponent with their own summoner spec. I have done it many a times in this matchup, because most of the time... They'll summoners packed, and I'll just be like, Karn, uh, give me one of those dual, those double lands. All right, full honesty time. Have you ever died to one on accident? A pact? No, I've never missed it on accident. My opponents have many times. Mm. I uh, I always put a very large dice on top of my yeah. deck. I've I've died I've died many times to things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, just straight up. Have you uh, ever used a Mind Slaver effect to choose not to pay a Pact? Are you allowed to do that? I assume so. You control their turn. Hmm. Interesting. I think they may have changed the rule in that since, but back then you might have been yeah. able to. I think if like if you have the mana, you have to now because of like, um, what is it? Emrakul, the Promised End, I think is the one that, that Mind Slaver is your opponent. I think you have to pay, but no, that's actually a pretty cool one. I've never, I've never won a game that way. That would be really sweet. All right, so it looks like we have a, a first tap land played, and uh, Austin is trying to decide if he wants to respond to the trigger to bounce it. Yeah, I think that's a Simic Growth Chamber. So, all right, yeah. Here, okay. Okay. So, no, this is always a, this is always the scary moment when the so dice come so out. Yeah. yeah. I think we just had a field of run. Okay, I was yeah. wondering what that card is. It's another one of the. I think that's double feature where the cards were very very blacked out. Yeah, I think Austin was waiting to see if Trent was going to bounce one of the other lands mm -hmm. and then blow it up in response. So we've got two green, two blue floating, and a colorless. I believe the white is colorless. Might yeah. be. Oh. And then a forest was grabbed by Trent here as well off the field of Ruin. Austin has taken kind of a really slow, methodical approach to both these games. He's not playing glimpse and playing Tasha's hideous laughter. He's just using his crab to slowly grind his opponent out and then be able to respond to anything. It's just crab control. Hey, it's just crab control. Crab control. You know? What if they print us a, another crab and we get to play 12 crabs? 
Why, why are you putting me in this? You take us like I'm part of this. Like I would, like I would be playing that deck. You to twelve crabs. There were twelve posts. Twelve posts is the old best friend. Twelve crabs, 12 crabs the new best friend. The new army. Yeah. So it looks like it's just gonna be a just ring. One ring. And it's it's weird when you're like, okay, oh, it's just a ring. It's just one ring. Yeah. It's it's not a primeval titan. Thankfully, I get I get possibly another turn here. My opponent wants to draw more cards. Yeah. Please, just yes. draw more cards. Yeah, I know, right? He's the Demir player. You're like, okay, this is actually good for me sometimes when they draw a bunch of extra cards. All right, a Boreal Grazer. This puts another... Okay, the Simic Growth Chamber back into play. So I'm this is going to make... I'm surprised that... Uh, we might still have a Titan this turn, by the way. Yeah, I'm just surprised Austin didn't go for the Archive Trap in response to the ring. Yeah, to maybe find the... Yeah, uh, find yeah. the Titan. Mm -hmm. uh, and because he's not going to be able to play it no matter what. And he caught Trent when he hit Shuffled. Okay, second of Boreal Grazer means that we are actually cooking here. This is so yeah. much mana. I... Don't know what that is. That I'm sorry. Is this a sideboard card? Oh, is this that? It's that card for sure. It's uh. Gretchen Titchwillow. Yes, this allows you to play a bunch of mana, draw a bunch of cards, and you can put lands from your hand into play. Yeah. yeah. This is aggression. Yeah. Yeah. So he's showing uh, well, that he's going to now draw his entire deck. Okay, yes. So, well, because so just bouncing the one Simic mana, right? makes yeah, six mana. Right. Because of the or four mana because of the double untap. And he will net mana. Draw. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. You ever go so this allows it to keep going. So yeah, you can pay four mana, draw a card. Yep. Then you put a land from your hand to the battle. So he'll put the Simic Growth Chamber into play. He'll untap it twice. Make four mana, pick it back up, do it again. Again, again. And this again. allows him to draw as many cards as he wants. So what he can do here is he can just start drawing the top of his deck until he finds a way to kill. Yeah, so that's... All right, so we're shortcutting here. So this is what's going on. Trent is activating Gretchen... Titch Willow over, over and, and over, over and over again, putting the Simic Grove Chamber into play every single time, triggering both of his ambulance to make four mana, and then picking up the Grove Chamber off its triggered ability when it comes into play. So, I'll have so that's what's going on. He's going to keep drawing until he finds... Okay, so now he's going to actually start netting mana. Yep. Now he's making two mana every time he draws a card. Yeah, so now draw your whole deck, make how plus two times it's, how many cards are left. It's not infinite, it's exponential. Yeah. Yeah. Now he needs to find a way to win the game with one one ring currently giving him protection. I, I, I think I think Trent's probably gonna figure it out. Yeah, I think a trick of it out here. I wonder if the surgical should get fired off at any point in time here, but I don't know if he gets if he has all the ways to stop. Because well, I guess if he hit Dry of Elysian Grove, he can't he can't Valakut this turn. Does he get infinite Valakut this turn? Well, no, because you can't get up to seven lands. Okay, so activation on the stack. I have yeah. I have one I have one blue floating. Right. Yeah, the, the Surgical or Extirpate both can still be cast. Um, I believe that there is one of those in Austin's hand. It could just be a really dark. No, it, it's definitely Surgical at the top. I think Flooded Strand, uh, Visions, and then Trap. Yeah. yeah. So I see a Karn in Trent's hand. All right, go ahead. Does he have a way to sideboard to win this turn oh, from the card? Because, like, here's the thing. If you have Infinite Man, if you have Walking Bliss in your sideboard... He does have Bliss in his uh, It matters how many cards you have left in your deck. The problem is he actually might have to draw too many cards to before he can be actually kill damage. Austin. Because yeah. he has to keep track of his mana here. Yeah, because it does take 34 mana. Yeah, you need so many... Yeah, you, you need at least 17 cards. You might draw out of out yeah. of cards in your deck. You might not have enough left. All right, so Summoner's Pact. I wonder if this is going to let Austin pull the trigger here finally. All right, Austin's gonna let this happen. What does Trent go and get? Trent has a plan, it looks like. So there's, all right, there's a. So this is what I was talking about. Maybe we should have surgical the dry to the Elysian Grove earlier. Yep. Maybe Austin's got a plan here. Also, look, if I was in Austin's seat, I would be a little thrown. Yeah. Because this is this is not a common thing that happens. Not a common line you yeah. expect Titan to take to kill you. All right, so dry to the Elysian Grove. So now you can play the bounce Another land. land. Yeah, he has another land drop besides the Gretchen activations now. Keeping up with this is, oh boy. Yeah, there's there's a lot happening. I, I think that Austin actually has nine of each. I think, I think those are a, upside down yeah. sixes currently. I'm gonna say he has the Cultivator Colossus. It looks like in hand. He shows the Cultivator Colossus. That's gonna prompt the concession from Austin Queer here. So we are gonna be going into a game here. That's the first time I've ever seen that. I've never actually seen the Gretchen play in no, Amulet I've, Titan before. I've never seen that before. Uh, I had to read Gretchen just now as we pulled it up. Uh, that's really sweet, though. Don't yeah. the Amulet just draw your whole deck. I haven't uh, seen that one ever. Be. I didn't even know that was a thing in Amulet Titan, but, but here's the thing. Every time I see Amulet Titan, there's some the new card in it, and they're like, yeah, it's busted. It goes infinite with this, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not surprised. 
Amulet is the weirdest deck in modern. It always comes, every set has some card in to get printed that you didn't think was for Amulet or wonder if it was for Amulet. It shows up in the deck, it does awesome stuff. The uh, the mill deck that we're seeing this round is different than the one we saw on camera yesterday. He's on full four surgicals main and three extirpates main. Oh, he wants so it. He just really wants to take his opponents. Yeah, he wants it. Decks apart and hit key cards and win that way. And there's so many decks in this format that if you get the right card the first two or three turns, the game's over. Yeah. Like think about you know our 8-0 player today. If you got to play against uh, creativity, if he hits Archon, the game's over. The game he, it, has no way to kill you. He, well, like. He's got to chip not enough fast, damage through. It's not going to be fast enough. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, and there, there's a lot, a lot of decks in modern that you can really take apart by hitting mm -hmm. one key card. I mean, he took Trent apart in game one just by hitting Amulet. I'm not surprised that he's doing well either. With all of these main in this many, we've had so many Esper uh, reanimated, reanimated decks mm -hmm. this weekend. He, he's just pre-boarded yeah. versus them. The, can you imagine getting extirpated on turn one in this format? I would be so mad. Yeah, between uh, the the four creativity decks and the four uh, Esper decks, you're talking 20% of the day two field that he's just pre-sideboarded against. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've talked about this in formats before. Uh, Dredge in the past for Legacy and Modern had something around like a 70 or 80% win percentage in game one. Mm -hmm. And if you could do that, like you just have to cobble together a win in game two or three. And that's not hard. And here we go. We've got a... A sanity already happening on Trent, two and grazer, two grazers. every single time I want to I want to keep up with this is a this is a cycle uh, sanity too. So I've yeah. got to believe there is some form of extraction effect in his hand that he's possibly looking for, you know, one of the cheeky early get out way ahead by taking something important away from your like duck here. He hit two lands and two arboreal grazers, which that's what it looks like. Be happy to have gotten off the top of his library. Take anyway. those out my deck, please. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't need those yeah. anymore. Also, getting the amulet on turn one again huge for Trent because it helps. It helps protect Dodge. it. Plus, plus he's going to be copying here. This is going to be very similar to game two. So this, yep. we saw this work in game two for Trent. So it's very likely that it'll work again here. Yeah, Something about not a, a lot of good answers in the Demir deck for a tight or for an amulet that's already in play. What is this? This is. Oh, that is the Jace. So that is Jace Perfect Mind. Okay, Jace Perfect Mind. Okay. So Jace starts with five. You can minus X to mill three times X, uh, or you can uh, give a creature minus three minus so, or you can have a player mill three cards. And if a graveyard has 20 cards in it, you draw three cards. Otherwise, you draw one card. That was a lot of stuff. Yeah. So the main thing is it's, it's a mill 15 if you need it, and it's a way to draw cards or draw three cards at a time if the yeah. graveyard is full. Does Austin have a an extraction effect in his hand? I can't tell because if he did, I wonder. He, does. he has an extra bait. Okay. Well, I mean, he doesn't have yeah. surgical, but he has yeah. extra. Bait. If I had surgical there, if I was Austin, I think I'd be pretty incentivized to mill as many cards that turn as possible, and just try to get it. He, so he didn't have he it. He chose yeah. to do nothing with the Jace. Oh, he went, did he go up? I think. Uh, so there were no creatures to go up oh, on sh one. Is it one of those? Is it up two or does it have to have a target? Up two. So he could. Oh, well, well, hold on. He might have actually, he paid three mana for it, I think, and it comes in completed, so he might have gone four. up from four to five or, yeah. or something. Yeah. But we have a ring from Trent here, uh, the one ring into play from him. So he's got protection this turn, so some of the mill effects won't work. Uh, also, again, another sigh of relief for Austin. Okay, at least it's not Titan immediately. Yeah, at least yeah. it wasn't Titan, uh, but just means it's way more likely it's going to be Titan next turn after three additional cards have been drawn uh, off of this one ring. Oh, someone told me that's Ashiok. <laughs> oh, that's sideboarded Ashiok, so that he can't search. Okay, sure. Okay, that makes that makes a lot more sense as to why it just stayed at five. Good eye from either the coverage booth or from Twitch chat. Twitch chat is undefeated. They're never wrong. I mean, also, I've never seen this art before in my life on that one. Hmm. So, sorry, goes the graveyard. Trent just shovels because it does require you to shuffle. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, Ashok's still really good. Ashok's very strong against these decks. Uh, oh, yeah, I missed that one in the sideboard when I was looking at options in the in this matchup. Ashok is very, very good against a deck that wants to kill you with Primeval Titan. Yeah, really, really strong. And uh, yeah, you don't even have a chance to uh, mill just yet because of the protection. So it's going to be wait a, a turn before that happens. Extirpate the sagas as uh, both uh, an answer and a threat. Uh, Prime Titan is not nearly the threat. If it's just a 6-6 six, six that's not killing you the moment it comes into play, True, I'm I mean, searching up a bunch of lands. Yeah, you have no searches here, but this also just gets three cards out of Trent's deck as well. That's not 
that's not nothing. Yeah, that's the bonus of, of the mill deck getting to play the surgicals is that it is reducing the size of the deck, so it is in the game plan. Uh, so it's real easy to play them main. <laughs> But it looks like Austin's version of this deck, his main game plan is Surgical and Extirpate. Just take apart your opponent's game plan and uh, mill them out as the way to finish them off. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at Trent's hands. See what we're going to be running into. I see a Boreal Grazer, Dismember, Simic Growth Chamber. I think that's a Cultivator Colossus. And I think that's a Amulet of Vigor and a Valakut. Yeah, definitely Valakut. I think the second card is Amy Vigor. There's an alternate art one. Yeah, yeah, I do think that is Cultivator Colossus. I believe you're correct uh, on that. No, sir. So, Trent, though, sitting on just one land. He has double amulet, so he can make well, a bunch of mana. He has one land, but yeah, double, <laughs> double amulet, yeah, it can make you go from one to six very fast. So, he drew a Karn. Uh, he is going to get to Karn right here. All right, let's see what he wants to do. Simic Growth Chamber yep. off, off of one amulet. So the Simic Growth Chamber oh, three times. And this is going to be Cultivator Colossus, Colossus right here. Yeah. Cultivator Colossus, uh, the the one bonus big guy in most of these amulet let's, decks. Yeah, let's see how deep we want to go here. Trent's going to keep going. There's three lands. Or, I'm sorry, two lands off of it. Yeah, so going to get to draw a couple cards. Untap these three times. Mana. Yeah, so we've got three three... Red, six blue. This is Trent is just three, hoping three, to get a haste land right here. Blue. Go to town. What else was left over in Trent's hand? I didn't see what he drew this turn either. I mean, he's, oh, he drew he's, Karn. Yeah, so he's not done casting stuff. He might be able to actually kill this turn. So, Karn doesn't white. search. Karn does Karn search your sideboard? Like, can you Karn with Ashiok in play? Yeah, yeah. The okay. Ashiok only shuts you down from searching your your library. deck, right? Yeah, yeah, your library. So, all right. So Karn, Karn's gonna consult the sideboard. Let's see which of the cards he left out there. Yeah. He's got eleven mana. That's enough to. Uh, I think it's a walking. That's the new walking ballista. Yeah, so it's I think. enough to ballista yeah. and kill off the Ashiok. It's um, what's what's the new set that just came out? Uh, Fallout. Yes. Is that it? Yeah, it's the Fallout walking ballista. It looks like. So if he wants, he might be able to clear this Ashiok here this turn. Yeah. So he's got 14 total mana. So much math. Those. Or 10, I believe. Here we go. This is a very large walking ballista. Austin, regrettably, is like, yep, that's good. So all five and of that's going to go with the Ashok. A Royal Grazer is going to find go another back. land. It's going to put a Simic Grove Chamber to play. That's going to tap three that's times. going to give a bunch more mana. And that's yeah, going to do it. it. And Trent, I feel you on yeah. that response. Just <laughs> absolute wow. The two games that he won. Just That's incredible. These are two of the two of the most broken turns I've seen the yeah. entire weekend. Just, just wild how he went from one land in play to win the game. On the back of triple amulets, he had he had one land in play at the start of that at the start of the turn, and I think he spent upwards of thirty mana that turn. Yeah, That's unbelievable stuff for Amulet Titan. This is why this deck is you know been around for so long and still considered top tier, especially the hands of players that really know what they're doing with it. As Trent looked like he was. Um, we for do the have a, a backup match that we're going to get awesome. to right here. Um, Trent almost putting himself into the top eight. We'll have to see. Have to see if he can yeah. safely draw in. So, so we're, so we're going to get Martyr in the hands of Jody Keith versus uh, Mono Green Tron, which we haven't seen on camera yet this weekend. Awesome. A deck that I'm very, very fond of myself. Uh, this is we're going into game two here. It looks like Mono Green Tron won game one. And here's the thing. I've played a lot of Tron in my day. The Mono White Martyr deck didn't really exist. Mm -hmm. so, so I can't really tell you how this matchup goes. But in a theoretical sense, at least game one, I don't hate being on the Mono Green Tron side just because you have so many, you know, Ulamog, Karn type effects that are so big and powerful. And if Jody draws the wrong side of his deck but without having a chance to sideboard out summons removal, yeah. it's not going to be as good of a spot for Jody because he's going to be doing a lot of like dirtily stuff while the Tron deck's going to start exiling permanents left and right. So the one thing I will say is that the, the mono white deck is just full of field of ruin effects. That's uh, really, really good. Obviously, to yeah, take sure. apart the Urza saga lands, uh, the Tron lands, mm -hmm. 
Forgive me. Also, I want to make a correction. I believe it's Andrea Lee, not Lay. So, sure. Uh, if you heard that the first time, my apologies. Yeah. Also, a big a big thing to talk about with uh, Tron nowadays. It's a. It, it's not like it's good against it, but it's better against something like Field of Run that has been in the oh, past. Because you're not just so. playing it's seven, eight, so. nine, ten drops. Like you're trying to play four mana car in a lot of these games, and so you could play games where, yeah, you get your 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 Tron lands beat up. You don't ever actually assemble Tron to make, you know, seven mana off three lands, but you're just going to tap four lands for four mana and that's completely fine and be able to cast a spell from there. Yeah, Maybe that's something along the lines of what happened in game one. Much more important to just play your, your Tron. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, if you miss it, you get your Karn. It's not like the, the, you're trying to cast seven mana card nearly as much as you're uh, casting the, the great creator. Also, there's another thing to talk about in this match that uh, I always like to bring up when you're watching one of the mono white martyr decks, especially, you know, Jody or some of these people that are, you know, very proficient with it. I want you to keep in mind this, the pace of play that Jody has during mm -hmm. his games, because Jody's main opponent during all of his rounds is the clock. Yeah, the, the mono white martyr deck is not full of good ways to close. Uh, we talked yesterday that the most common way for them to win games has been people realizing they're dead and <laughs> simply scooping up. Uh, at this point, uh, that's unlikely to happen. <laughs> they're going to make you uh, actually finish them off as you're a couple rounds away from finishing the tournament. Um, very similar build to the one that we saw yesterday here out of Jody. Uh, we already saw the Haywire Might uh, come in and uh, tag and uh, currently just a little 1-1 one -one beater putting... Andre on a very small amount of pressure. Yeah, when it took out Chromatic Star, you saw Jody uh, double check the card. He's like, is this one of the ones where you get to draw the card no matter what? Like, is right. it a dice trigger? What's going on? It looks like we're getting maybe Oracle text on a card here. That's what I assume is going on with that. Or uh, they're putting in their Uber Eats order. Maybe they're both yeah. a little hungry and they're like, hey, we're going to be here a little while. Yeah, let's get some food. Let's, let's get some Chipotle mm -hmm. or uh, some Velvet Taco since we're in Dallas. If you've never been to Velvet Taco in DFW, go check it out. Hashtag not sponsored. We could be, though. Velvet taco. Get out of here. Velvet taco. Yeah. I will eat your tacos on air for free. As we talk about sponsors, I do want to mention that there are dozens of sponsors uh, here for the Hunter Burton. We couldn't do what we do without them. All of the sponsors are listed at the Hunter Burton Memorial Open page. And again, this tournament is for a good cause. The whole point of this tournament is gaming to prevent suicide. It's a cause that is near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, if you're not here, come out next year. Come enjoy the one of the biggest tournaments in Texas while raising money for a good cause. And whatever format you play, I promise we have a side event for you. Yeah, a couple of them I wanted to point out. You know, we've got Card Cash is here. They're out here vendoring along with uh, CM Games. Make sure you check out their stuff. They've all got websites where you can buy your singles, get all kinds of really cool deals and stuff. If you're here on site, you can go buy. I've already spent way too much money on Magic Cards here this weekend, but it's all towards a good cause. And... You know, they've put up a lot of money to help us make sure that this tournament goes on without a hitch, that we've got this going. You know, you're going to get your your coverage of it. And because this is just a bunch of volunteers as well here this weekend. So really good cause. Happy to have all these people here and these tons and tons of really great sponsors. Jody resolving a Ranger captain, deciding what one drop he wants to go get out of his deck. Uh, paused to look at his hand again to help him make the decision. Uh, decides to just go with uh, another Thravey and uh, get a get a clue. Back to Andrea, two pieces of Tron, uh, looking for a third, or maybe already got the third with the Sylvan Scrying last turn while we were talking about uh, Chipotle and Look, tacos. Man, you could you distract me very easily with food. Yeah. I'm like I'm like a child. You could just distract me with food. Tron has fully powered up. Uh, Andrea now has access to eight total mana. A quick tap of seven you know i mean i actually felt really old the other day i was talking to somebody about a tron deck and they're like why is it called tron and so i had to explain it and i used you know yeah, yeah. i was like yeah well for voltron and they're like right. what's, what, what's voltron? voltron and they just keep going down the line it's like oh god <laughs> yeah so this looks like a worm coil engine uh from andrea uh probably the least threatening of all the threats that uh, Monocreen Tron could have deployed against the Mono White Martyr. Yeah, I don't know if Jody's going to really care too much about the life total. She's going to make sure, hey, look, don't die, don't die. It, you know, interact as much point. as possible. And at some point, I'll take over the game completely. Plus, there's quite a bit of exile effects in Jody's deck that can answer Wormcoil Engine without leaving behind the two three threes. 
And also, there's a ton of speed bumps in the way here. Mm -hmm. He can block with either one of his Thraven Inspectors. The Ranger Captain can jump in front and then sacrifice, or you don't even gain the life here if Jody wants to do something like that. Tons of options for him to really take care of this Worm Coil without being too big of a problem. In fact, when you see three Tron lands get tapped for seven mana, and it's Worm Coil, you're like, oh, thank God, it's, it's just Worm Coil. One Ring, on the other hand, a, That's a, good one. a scarier card for sure. Uh, one Ring has been all over coverage this weekend, just helping decks dig through stall or bury their opponents in card advantage. Yeah, I'm wondering if this is going to be like the reemergence of One Ring being very good in modern with... Uh, without, without Violent Albert. Yeah, with Living In being a little more, you know, not as playable, mm -hmm. with Rhinos being a little bit worse, like, and you, the format maybe slows down a little bit more, maybe some of the mid-range decks come back in a little bit more. Yeah, maybe it's time for One Ring to start shining again. If one Rhino, uh, if one Worm Coil was good, two Worm Coils is better. All right, chat, you know what to do. What's a group of Worm Coils called? <laughs> group We've been doing this all weekend long. Important part. I'm sure, look, I'm sure there's a, there's a word for a group of worms. <laughs> so... It's, it was a crash of rhinos. It was a crash of rhinos. It's a murder of a doom re dune related word for Ooh. worms, right? Yeah. Uh, you know what? You know, like this art actually kind of looks like a sandworm too. So I'm kind of into this. A little shy halud. Yeah, I was, I was just about to get it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Jody facing town. Uh, two worm coils. Uh, Jody deck does have solitudes and winds of abandon. He has plenty of ways to answer the worm coil without leaving the yeah. bodies behind. The one ring is the more important card that Joni needs to find an answer for here. Yeah, I was going to say, winds of abandon would actually be pretty awesome. He would be able to pick off both. Uh, this is a, a big draw for Jody here. This is something that can get him Martyr of Sand over and over and over again. So this is really big. Not only would it get his life total so high that he doesn't really have to worry too much about the worm coils, but this would keep putting a Martyr of Sands into play, allow him to block one of the worm coils and then sacrifice it. More okay, I, I, I've been told that a group of worms is called a a, cl a clue. C L E W. It's C L E W. So a clue. A, a clue of worm coil engines. Okay. Okay. So we have a uh, pithing needle now locking down the one ring. Uh, I believe is what just happened. Actually, the one ring is out of play. So I'll have to check in a second. Um, oh, so what happened was the Abiding Grace allowed Jody to bring back Haywire Might, mm -hmm. which is sitting in the graveyard, and is a, just a clean answer to all three of these threats. So this, this is actually great. I forgot the Haywire White was it. Haymire, Haywire, bleh. Haywire Might. Haywire Might. Thank you very much. I don't talk for a living. Uh, and that's just going to be a clean answer to everything, like you were saying. That's going to be absolutely awesome for Jody Keith here. Well, I actually really like this Mono White Martyr deck. And it's really fun. Seriously, if you know anything about Jody Keith, this deck is right up his alley. Oh, absolutely. He is almost, if if Jody is playing like the quote unquote best deck in the format, it's because the deck is that broken. Jody almost always attacks a metagame at a very like different From angle. Off angle. Yeah, he's always at the off angle with some cool deck that you don't know about or haven't heard of or some weird metagame called like this. But here's the other thing. Jody practices these decks. He's not just like, oh, I'm just going to pick this weird deck. Jody puts in the time because the effort. He's a hell of a magic player, so he's going to play these decks well also. So Andreas found uh, another ring here and then tapped eight mana for a card that is currently in the glare. Uh, whatever it was, it answered the uh, Abiding Grace from Jody. I can figure out what, what we had happen here. Ugin, perhaps? No, there's no counters. No, that's the, uh, it's, it's City Scape Lover. It's the 8-8, eight, eight, yeah. yeah. City Scape Lover. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, does Haywire might not hit creatures? If I remember right, it doesn't hit creatures. That's a good question. So he doesn't, he no longer has the recursion on Haywire might, but I believe non-creature artifact, non-creature enchantment. Yep. So non-creature enchantment is just a weird thing to say Wait, from someone from You can't kill back. a god. Yeah, you can't yeah. kill a god is what it is. That's yeah. really what it comes down to. Haywire might can't commit uh, a DSI, so. Well, I mean, you could catch them when they're not a creature. Get the Heliod out of here. I don't know how that. I don't know the rules that work. I don't know the rule. Like, I'm not a layers guy. <laughs> chat, tell us how that works. Again, chat undefeated. They they knew that was cityscape level right away. They they evidently knew it was a clue of worms. They did. I think it was actually Hal Brady with the assist there mm -hmm. coming back here. Noted shy halud lover. Oh, Brady. I think we all are recently. Shout out to Dune 2. If you haven't gone and seen that movie, just go ahead and go book some IMAX tickets right now. Well, not right now. Wait till the Hunter Burton is over. Go a little later tonight. Probably get the 9 p.m. showing. Can we get a verification on what the needle was on? I assumed it was on ring, but then the ring was activated and answered. Uh, so I assume the needle is on 
Now, Karn, perhaps? All right, we'll try and figure that out. We'll, we'll see maybe what card doesn't get played into it. Skyclave Apparition, a card that was all over Modern for a while, that does not see nearly as much play uh, anymore. The threats uh, maybe just don't line in, line up into it as well. There's just not a deck in this, the right area. Dude, we don't have collected company decks. Sure, in the right that's now. the big thing is like paying three mana for a Skyclave Apparition is a lot to pay for a 2-2 two -two that doesn't always answer. The thing is, it does answer some really problem problematic permanents in this. And Get then the wondering. also when you're a mono white, we keep saying mono white, there is a temple garden play because of Haywire Mites, <laughs> but when you're a mono white deck, you 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 make do with what you've got. Yeah. You know, you beggars can't be choosers when it comes to this kind of thing. So you find the answers that you can. Plus, it's a really sweet card to have and like bring it in your sideboard because are, are you really gonna leave in a lot of removal against Jody? Like right. I don't think you will, right? Because like what are you what are you gonna yeah. hit with your removal spells? You're gonna, you're gonna kill one of these eagles. It's you a know, like breaking the the two best uh, maybe white removal spells in modern don't work in a mono white deck. You can't play prismatic ending and you can't really play leyland binding. That's very true. They're very not good at this deck. They're really not built for this. Yeah. Jody is down to one card. He's facing down double worm coil. He's still at 21, uh, but he is very far on the back foot after losing his uh, rebirth. Not to mention the cityscape leveler is going to start triggering again when it, yeah. when it attacks. All right, here we've got... Besage you taking care of the pithing needle. So whatever it was naming, no longer relevant. It doesn't matter anymore. Okay. Wasn't naming uh wasn't naming anything important, evidently. Uh it looks like Jody is in deep trouble here. I'm not sure what the couple of cards in Jody's hand are. Um he has not had a clean answer to Worm Coil for multiple turns. He's just been throwing Thraben inspectors under the bus. Uh Andrea's down to two cards, but now that the Karn is played post Masaju, I'm going to say it was on Karn. I think it was on Karn, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get Walking Ballista. Walking Ballista. Fight the card, especially when you have this much mana. Not going to bother playing it for three. We want, the, we want all of it next turn. Yeah, I think he's just trying to play around a Wrath effect as well. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't need it to kill this because the Citizen Cap Lever is going to go ahead and kill this, give another Power Stone over to Jody. So, Jody can. Overload of Winds of Abandon to deal with everything in play. But then I believe he's just going to be dead to the... Um, the Walking Ballista at this point. Yeah. My brain wants to only say Hanger Back Walker. And I know it's wrong every time. Yep. But it's still where my brain says that's what I should be saying. Well, Jody's down to one here. So the Walking Ballista is actually just lethal just this lethal. turn, right? Yeah. So there we go. Walking Ballista. And that's going to be it That'll for be Jody Keith. Yeah. Uh, Andrea Lee moving on to 10 and 2. Probably able to draw him. We'll see where we, we end up here. Um, we are going to get into round 14 here very shortly. Uh, do you still have a, a favorite for who's going to win this whole thing? Or do you think it's up in the air? No, nah, I'm keeping my pick from earlier. The blue white guys okay. going to bring it home. I'll, I'll let I'll let your creativity friend know that you're, you're not back. Well, I, said, I, said, I said that in my heart. In your heart. That's, that's who I good. want to win. But uh, I was calling it for the other guy. Uh, once. Um. We, I believe, are going to be going directly into our next match. We're just going to swap uh, swap out who's sitting here on the couch. Give us just a moment, and we'll be ready for round 14.